Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by another donation from Henry, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, I hope you're doing well. I'm back again with another topic. It's somewhat of a PSA, or at the least, an observation I have about the MGTOW community. I follow the MGTOW Reddit forums at r forward slash MGTOW2. Recently a girl posted on the forums praising the men from r MGTOW2 on being the nicer half of MGTOW, saying stuff like the main thread is full of bitter men spewing their toxic hate against women. Of course, I'm just paraphrasing. She said it in a much nicer way. I was immediately suspicious of this person, Sandman. A woman coming onto a MGTOW forum praising us for being kind and supporting our community. I call baloney. She was simply attention-seeking, and lo and behold, Sandman, MGTOW men were praising her and thanking her for her support. It was like seeing red pill men going blue pill the instant a girl actually pats them on the head. What happened to internalized validation? Am I reading too deep into this? Perhaps, but I think this is just the start of something more to come, Sandman. Like you've predicted many years ago. Women will start infiltrating the MGTOW community with praise and perky melons. When women are increasingly isolated from the dating market and learn that shaming men doesn't work anymore, they'll come out in droves wearing aprons with a sandwich in hand. I wonder, Sandman, how many men will actually go back to the plantation? And is it our place as fellow travelers to tell them not to be led astray? I think that many men are compromising with MGTOW in the current climate. I'm trying to internalize respecting individual sovereignty, Sandman. At the same time, I'm actually trying to tell these men to wake up. I have to keep telling myself when in doubt, freedom is the right answer. So I guess it's your free choice to head back to the plantation. What do you think? Thanks and have a pleasant day. Well, Henry, thanks for your donation as well as topic request. To me, it looks as though women on Reddit are simply rewarding the nicer half of MGTOW. Women, as Jordan Peterson has mentioned on numerous occasions, tend to be more agreeable than men are. So if we men want an environment that's inhospitable to women, then we have to make it emotionally inhospitable. If you do that and turn the environment toxic, then it makes it uncomfortable for chicks. It doesn't matter how physically comfortable it is, if it's emotionally bad, then they simply won't go there. So Henry, when you describe a woman giving men validation for making an environment warm and hospitable for them, to me it signals that they're trying to convince men or reward men that make such environments fertile ground for women to hang out in. Women have a smaller amygdala, which means they actually have a harder time dealing with unpredictable or negative emotions. For men that have been bullied their entire lives, they actually have an amygdala that's larger than a usual guy's. That leads to a lack of trust with other humans and means those men have a harder time forming new friendships and have more social anxiety as a result. I tend to be in that particular camp. Guys like that also tend to be more suspicious of those people around them, including women. I would wager that many TFL guys would be in that camp where they have a larger amygdala as well. It's almost as if women are trying to filter the MGTOW community on Reddit by giving validation to the types of behaviors they prefer, which allows them to sneak into the community and slowly try and take over. That's my take on their current behavior. You're right, Henry, women come to MGTOW communities for attention, and they trade male validation for attention. But the linchpin for their entire plan is making the environment emotionally hospitable for themselves by rewarding the behavior that they see appropriate. I used to think that at male-only work sites, the guys were typically cruel and mean because that's just how guys were. But now I see it as a byproduct of having the ability to deal with hostility and not let it emotionally overwhelm or underwhelm them. As a woman with a small amygdala, that generally means they don't have the tools to deal with unpredictable emotions. But having a big amygdala means that you're overly cautious and it may tend to override the rational parts of your brain because you're kind of skittish. So it might cause you to attempt to overcompensate and overanalyze everything that's said about you and others in the work environment. Regardless of if it's too big or too small, if you have an amygdala that's not somewhere in the medium range, it prevents you from adapting to social or emotional environments properly. So that's my little theory as to why women seek to emotionally colonize male spaces. But they can't do this entirely themselves because while they can actually reward good men for good behavior, they can't confront men with bad behavior because it's too emotionally uncomfortable for them, unless perhaps they're rabid feminists. So instead, I believe that they try and co-opt the agreeable men to tone police the less agreeable guys. My guess is that in this particular case, you're describing, Henry, that they're rewarding the men that are behaving themselves correctly by making the environment kind of welcoming. They hope that other men see how they're getting female validation, and therefore they too will adjust their behavior accordingly. Once men are hooked to female validation on a consistent basis, then women could pull some of it away. They could say to the individual guy, you know what would really make me feel good? If you went over there and corrected that other guy's behavior. If the guy refuses, then she pulls away the female validation, so the only way for him to get that fix again is to go out there and tone police the guys that she doesn't like or agree with. It's like a drug dealer getting the junkies to do the dirty work for them. 
Henry, I don't think you're reading deeply enough into this issue. Men can get internal validation, but it takes effort. Female validation is generally effortless at first. She hooks you to it and you actually have to run faster and faster and put more effort in to get the same validation drug. You will have to fight other men on her behalf and those men will be almost completely unaware of what you're doing. It's really easy for men to switch from red pill to blue pill if a woman strokes our ego along with something else. Staying on the red pill takes mental focus and if you date or get into a relationship, it's very easy to fall off the wagon. I know this because it happened to me and I became a white knight simp. Men going their own way in the comments section below this video and in online forums have to remain eternally vigilant against women, and more specifically how they make us feel and therefore how they affect our behavior. I don't think that any man that's taken the red pill is going to willingly go back to the plantation. I think there's a lot of bargaining that goes on and the man believes that he can go back to the love drug and drug of female validation and that if he just reasons and rationalizes enough, things will work out. But even the best of us can't control our emotions. Eventually, those emotions overwhelm the rational parts of our brain. You can't reason with your emotions. Women have been trying to do that for the longest time, and you see where it's got them. Recently, I've been trying to bargain with myself yet again. I recognize that sex and physical intimacy are not going to work for me because they shrink my brain down to the size of a pea. So the latest thing I'm actually feeling that I should actually try is asexual dating. I don't need a relationship, I need a muse. I need to have someone that's going to twirl my mustache like Salvador Dali and inspire me to do my work just by being in her presence. Once I hopefully solve my physical problems or at least manage them with minimal pain, I'm thinking that I'll need someone to just hang around with and have companionship with that I actually feel passionate about but direct that passion into my projects instead of them. It's another one of those social experiments that I'll try and when I do I'll let you guys know. So that way you guys can get on my ass if my behavior changes in a bad way. The idea is to see if I can get female validation and companionship without her trying to turn me into a mindless simp to do her bidding. Let's see if that works. I know that there are a lot of women out there that are into romping around in the bedroom, but might actually be good company if they can keep their veil of sanity on their face. You guys know that I like the quiet ones, and there's one out there that I know right now that actually became a mute a couple of years ago, and she's a good DJ. If she talks too much with her hands, I'll bring out the tape and tie them together. Problem solved. No need to listen to nagging on this end. Rope, it's like duct tape for mutes. So Henry, now you see how easy it is for guys to slip up. I criticize guys for falling for it all the time and bargaining with the booty. But even I'm guilty of it from time to time. I even enjoy the validation I receive from women on Facebook from time to time as well. Some guys wonder why I talk to women online because I'm simply giving them attention. I say because in return for that attention, I get female validation and compliments, and that in moderation hasn't been too bad for me, so long as I know where to cut it off. As for your fear of women infiltrating MGTOW, Henry, I see them come and go, and they never get anywhere. It doesn't seem to work out for them because there always seem to be enough men around that understand their game, even on a subconscious level. And if only 5% of guys get hostile regardless of what the white knights say on Reddit or MGTOW forums, or even below this video, it'll be enough to make most women feel uncomfortable. That's when women send in their special forces, aka feminists to infiltrate YouTube or find community guideline violations or copyright violations or possibly some other form of bad behavior, and they attempt to change our behavior that way using force or by doxing the badly behaved men, or by shaming them publicly under the threat of losing their jobs. But with online anonymity and freedom of speech, their strategy to silence men is not going to work very well, as I've mentioned in previous videos. Until then, we're safe for the most part. If we were meeting in a physical space and we had visible men showing their faces out in public, they would do what they did to Rouge V they would get the government to ban him from entering various countries. If men need to wake up to one thing, then it's understanding that anonymity online and the freedom of speech are the two things that make us untouchable, at least for now. That and the fact that there are men in the forums and comment sections that are disagreeable and chase women away because it makes them feel uncomfortable, and their poor little amygdalas just can't take it anymore. Another recent realization I came to, Henry, was with regards to the nature of pain, most specifically between physical pain and emotional pain. Hear me out as this relates to women. For the last three or four years, pretty much most of my experience as a man going his own way, I've had to deal with some of the most intense pain in the form of constant throat infections from diet, hand pains from calcified muscles, and foot pains from fungus. I never would have thought that constant physical pain was actually a good thing. I solve one issue temporarily or semi-permanently, or get it under control and another one typically shows up. So my life has been a rotating pain show for at least the last three years now. But it's kind of weird because it's been beneficial in some kind of crazy way. Because I'm focusing on the feeling of a physical pain, and therefore I'm not dealing with emotional pain in my life. 
I can't or more specifically don't feel emotional pain because the physical pain takes priority and overrides the emotions that I feel. It's like I'm one of those people that cuts themselves to distract themselves from their emotional pain. This helps me to understand myself even more and what it is to actually motivate me to keep producing videos here. I occasionally feel hand pain when typing my scripts or editing my videos. I feel emotional pain if I don't stay on my schedule so long as I don't have any physical pains. Those things take priority. So the emotional issues I may get from not getting enough human interaction or going cold turkey from relationships after 20 years is way down on the list of things I actually need to feel. Life is pain it seems, but not all types of pain are the same. Physical pain is less painful than the emotional one. That's just my most recent realization, and I'd love to hear what everyone else has to say about that in the comment section. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Henry, for your donation as well as your topic. Don't forget to smash the like button the way that I won't be smashing those asexual mute girls. Bang the bell and check out the MGTOW mystery link. Follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Subscribe to me on Minds.com or Gab.ai to get the video for the day after tomorrow. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the fully operational and nagging voice box away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.